So this was the last building that was built on the property. The concept of this building was that it goes right along the stone wall and where the stone wall was, it's replaced by the colonnade of concrete above which is a kind of stone and it's where the tall trees were that were cut down. So it represents the trees and the stone that were along that wall traditionally in the past. The roof of this building is a funnel that collects water that goes into a tank in the middle that has 10,000 gallons of water storage in different tanks so they don't build up too much pressure. That's the water that's used in the building. Uh, in order to heat all that, it's inside of a greenhouse that goes uh, up two stories and a little bit more than two stories to the top. The thing on the left is uh, there's a ramp that goes up through and through that bridge into the greenhouse and then into the building. And most of the building that occurs is over here, which is office and art gallery and all that. Okay, this is the greenhouse. This is our summer ventilation system. There are these little pipes with screen in it. Then there's some things that open up at the top to let the heat out. We're not growing plants in it at the moment. It's really a heating system. So we have a nice glass table. We've had Christmas dinner down here. We've had Thanksgiving dinner down here. It's all snow outside and you can, if the sun comes in and as long as you don't do it too late, you got a great, great space for that. Well, I'll talk about a couple of things. We have a bunch of cisterns. The, the water in there is cisterns. Uh, there's uh, septic cisterns under this deck. And so we have a bunch of them. And this goes back to, uh, it's influenced by a piece of, of T.S. Eliot's poem, The Wasteland, one of the few rhyming sections where it says, uh, I'll, I'll say it, a woman drew her long black hair out tight and fiddled whisper music on those strings and bats with baby faces in the violet light whistled and beat their wings. And upside down in air were towers with reminiscent bells that told the hours out of empty cisterns and exhausted wells. That's sort of been an influence in my thought about the, this. Also, these brick walls, of course, come from uh, some of the work that Louis Kahn did in India as an inspiration, although they don't really kind of line up with anything he did specifically. But the, the method, the method of using the concrete pieces as tension rods and, and having various brick arches is, uh, I, th I thought it was beautiful. When he came to talk at Yale uh, the first time and showed the Indian work, um, I mean, we were all just, we were all just knocked out by it. Just thought it was the best stuff. Yeah, the part of Khan's stuff I liked was the best was the one that was sort of irregular or had the other things that were distorting it for some reason or other. So. This part out here, I think, is the part that I like the best. But I do like this round window because when you look through it, you can see all kinds of other stuff that's going on. And the, and the, 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 the aluminum of the greenhouse becomes very thin. It's like uh, you have this heavy brick and then you have this very delicate, lacy structure of the greenhouse. This is the north side of the house, which is a collage. It doesn't really have any windows. It's a, it has one little teeny window, which brings a little light into a hallway that goes but where the bathroom, uh, where the sink is. So you get a little light on the way to the bedroom from the staircase. The, the staircase is white clabbards. The, uh, the, 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 the turquoise element is, um, which I call 20,000 leagues under the sea surface. And then the stone is obviously chimneys. But the inspiration for this wall is Picasso's paintings of the three harlequins. These are the three different textures, different sizes, different images. Yeah, this is the art gallery, and I would like to extend out the back and down this way to make this into a courtyard and give us a lot much more gallery space plus a handicapped access ramp and all this stuff to become, you know, in the big time. We built this uh, to get the power line over here because there were too many rocks and things to put it underground and the, it all comes into the buildings in this corner. So we built this virundal truss 
And one of the things we did is that we were afraid that the plow guy, the pl we have plow guys, it doesn't matter who they are, they knock over trees and do just about everything they can possibly do. You can see over here they've wrecked the stone wall with the plow. So I didn't want them knocking this whole thing over with the power line in it, which we call the volta duct. We call this a volta duct. Um, so this is very big, but I didn't want all this concrete because concrete is evil in terms of its ecological footprint. So what we did is we put sauna tubes that were enclosed on the inside that just have air in them and ran all the rebars around so that the strength of any impact on here goes all the way down and you don't need the center part to make that work. So it's, it's the kind of way I was thinking about we might want to consider minimizing the concrete in columns and things. Originally this was just a wall, just this wall barn, like a big barn thing. The roof on both these sides uh, pitched towards us. So the water would all just fall down on the ground here. Then we decided we could use the water somewhere. So when we, we could have more water. So we extended this roof. We extended a lot of the roofs, actually, at that point to collect more water and made this into a gutter. And it's sort of in these trusses go right along here. And the only thing that changes on the trusses is the, the center point of the truss starts dropping as it goes across so that the whole gutter inside pitches this way but the top is level and everything looks level. And then we have lights up in it, so at night uh, when we have an art opening and things here, uh, we, uh, we have the, uh, the sort, of, sort of like a giant sign of, of light that when you come in and you see it. Uh, it's pretty impressive, I think. A lot of people seem to like it. This is the car court. Uh, we, uh, it's a little bit crude, but we have our uh, reception parties out here because it's covered from the rain. And sometimes it's rained during reception, so it's worked out well. Uh, the garages are there, which are really just storage. And this is part of the house. The, the alcoves are the low pieces here. The angle uh, braces sticking out from the wall were put there so that we could uh, simply place scaffolding planks across them to do maintenance on the building. They're a permanent scaffolding, basically. They have a visual design function also as adding interest to a sometimes plain wall surface, especially one that's historical material such as clapboards. Uh, the contrast of the shiny and complex aluminum joints against the clapboards create a sort of historic uh, shift one way or the other, and it creates more interest on the surface. And this, this whole angle and everything is based on Michelangelo's Campidoglio in Rome, where they're, 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 two of the buildings, I think, were there initially. And then he built one, that which would be that one. Uh, and these two are the same, and that was that. So they were kind of heralding the one in the middle. He, of course, of course put a statue of Marcus Aurelius in the middle, because we didn't happen to have a Marcus Aurelius statue. So we put the people from the party or the things that are in the middle here. And the other thing you can see from here is the, the disengaged column uh, for the colonnade, for the, the tree sculpture thing. They, it's like a jazz thing where you play the, you play the melody and then you, you, you do different things with it. So you have one perfectly sort of virgin column out there and then the others are all entangled and engaged with the building itself behind the greenhouse, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the only one that's freestanding. Right. This is the airlock, and then we come in here, and uh, this is the art gallery. We have just put up this show. Uh, it's a painter from from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and upstairs there's a sculptor from, from Albany. This used to be the woodworking shop for uh, about 27 years, and we decided to make it into an art gallery, so we did things like we put the slate in the floor, uh, we kind of trimmed off stuff a little bit more nicely, um, we put in the skylights, and then we also made these little hanging panels that we can lower to add more art, but I'm not using them in this show because 
this is good. There's a conference going on here in less than a month, and uh, I want to have art on the wall, but I don't want to have art where the, on top of the people who are in the conference. So that, this is sort of based on a quadrant system. This is very kind of con influence too, I have to say. It's very geometric with one irregularity. It's sort of like I can make an analogy to the buildings at Dhaka, capital of um, Bangladesh building that he did where everything is in this fairly rigid geometry set of uh, uh, it's like a duodecadon or whatever it is. And then one piece is twisted a little bit because it's a mosque and it has to face the east. So when you have something that influences it and changes the geometry, I find that very intriguing. And this is the case where Michelangelo made me make this wall on an angle back from the building when all the rest of it is rectilinear. And I'll tell you where I stole this from. I stole this from Frank Gehry. He used multiple layers of plywood and grain. But, he didn't, but there was all that, you know, and I like the idea that you have some of it against some planar material. But I think this is sort of nice. You can sort of lean on here and not feel like you're going to fall out. It's not like the Guggenheim. I always feel like I'm going to go right over the edge. The first show that we had in 2015 in here, we had Robert de Grenier's glass sculptures on that uh, on the metal uh, grill going across there. So you couldn't really touch them, but there was all the light on them, and you could sort of see and glance down or up from underneath. And so I just put this book together, and then I took some pictures. This is under construction. You can see. Making it. It's sort of interesting in a way, visually, almost more interesting than the actual building. You know, the, I've often thought that the architectural drawings are more interesting than the, than the architecture. But, and here's like the water systems, and here's the series of these walls with the, and upside down with arrow towers with the, the cisterns and exhausted wells. And then here's the elevations of all those brick things, because I was enamored of those. So this is what is now our library. We'll have more, more shelving space as we move over there, and that'll be good. And we have a little desk here with the computer where people can use that. We'll get it together at some point, but I think we have made a nice shelving system. And then we have a bridge that goes over to the office where we have the bathroom. So when we have the gallery shows, they can go in through here and go to the bathroom. And then we have some. Uh, OK, well, this is, this is the gallery. I think it's been very successful, and people seem to like it a lot, which pleases me. Uh, and we had nice events, and we have people come back over and over again. And yeah. what we need is new people to come too and see it. You know. Uh, this drum is the entrance drum, and it's the, where the water comes down from this roof, splashes in there, and goes down. And it, you can stand inside the cistern that's underneath there. And that's pumped out into the house. And interestingly, we always thought, well, we ought to heat it over the winter so it didn't freeze or anything. And then we finally stopped doing that, and it didn't seem to make any difference. So somehow the ground is protecting it or the building or whatever. So, uh, but we had, a, we had a thing where we tried we were going to put a light bulb in there, and that was stupid. So we, what we did is we, when we were in the winter when we were here, we had a, the hot water heater. We would take a little bit of hot water and just drip it into the tank. It's kind of like it would come out of the tank, we pump it out, and a little bit would drip in to keep the temperature up, which was really clever, but now apparently unnecessary. <laughs> now, also, you can see this slot, and this slot is right in, in an axis with the stone wall. So you can actually, and the ramp goes to the top. So when you're at the top of the ramp, you can look down and see out the stone wall. So I guess it creates the axis, basically, of movement in the building. Now, a lot of people say, why do you have a ramp? And I want to say to them, well, it's a way of going upstairs without realizing you're going upstairs. And you get to the top and say, isn't this amazing? I'm higher now, and I didn't actually go up any stairs. But in reality, what it is, it's a different experience. And it does, you don't have to be handicapped to like the idea of a ramp. 
So this also serves as a little mini gallery. There's an air handling system for winter that sucks the heat from here during the day and pumps it into the office. And then you can have a return here. There's a panel that closes it off or you can open it. So we'll go in the office. It's a mess, but it's always a mess and it always will be a mess. Because it's a real working environment. And it's the access to the gallery. We have two big windows into here, so in the winter when the sun's out, you open this up. Uh, it's a little problem with the computer because it, uh, there's too much light sometimes in your, in your eyes. And there are windows this way, which we cover in the winter because they're just general heat loss. Well, welcome coming through the bridge and into the greenhouse. Just looking down into the greenhouse and through and out into the world. This leftover wood. We did a lot of stuff with the leftover wood, made this kind of little stuff living room floor and different things. I got all the wood from uh, the hill over there. There was a little sawyer from Canada we called Gold Tooth. He had all gold teeth and he was great. He said, I, have to, I sell you board, 25 cent board a foot for this maple and, uh, and all these other, you know, cherry and all. It was great. And then they kicked him out of town. So he sold all his stuff. I bought everything he had left and uh, he went to Canada. He says, I go back to Canada to hell with them, he says. And he went back to Canada, and he won the lottery, and he won $400,000 in the lottery. <laughs> this, is the, the, this would be called the living room, and we don't use it a whole lot except for when we have guests or something. All right, these, are, these windows are they're here and in the other, again, the kitchen side of the building. This is the water tank here right in the middle. And I'll get that over there, and this one's over here. And when you open these, you have this very expansive, very nice sense of up, of looking up, and you get to see your water tank, and it's all very exciting. Um, and you can close them at night for, uh, these are triple cell insulating blinds. An interesting uh, concept of uh, solar uh, orientations what's been called off-axis solar. I think it was originated by Dan Scully, um, a classmate of mine, a friend, and uh, the son of Vincent Scully, the famous art historian, which, which says that as you move away from pure solar orientation and you slide either to the east or to the west, there's still a point at which you get a lot of energy uh, and it's uh, not exactly on the solar axis. So it seems about 45 degrees is the limit of it. And uh, so as an example of that, we have the water tower that has both the southeast and southwest sides glazed uh, with the insulating glass inside the greenhouse as uh, the, the source of the solar energy heating the water in the tanks. The inside of the tanks are just tiled on the concrete because uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's thermally connected to the building. That's what we want. We want the water, which is over, always over the, the room temperature, to be able to give off some heat into the room. So wherever you see the black tile, that's the surface that's doing it. The white tile is uh, around the stair, everything that goes into the stairwell. If we come up, you can get a glimpse of the kitchen in action. This is a tomato from the garden tomato uh, processing that's going on. These cupboards are pretty interesting in that they only, the trouble is if you have wood like this, it tends to want to start moving and everything. So you want this to be able to move down and up. So there's little gaps in here, and this U is holding them this way and this way, and that's what's fastened so that you get this 
thing. This can be fastened, but the other end isn't fastened, and then it just becomes stable. But it's a, a, it's a clever way of doing it. And the floor, I want to point out this tile stuff. You can see where the doors are. The doors have the swing in the pattern of the floor. Okay, this is, a, this is an exploded cafe table, which is you know, the same, same sort of striation as the cabinets, and the matching chairs that go with them. This is the deer chair. These are now, uh, these are uh, over 30 years old. These are 30 years old. And um, uh, you can put little gloves on here in the, in the winter to make the antlers. It's the deer chair, so it has to have antlers at times. So. And actually, they don't look like they'd be very comfortable, but only a few people that we know complain about it. So, uh, and I'm used to it. There's a light fixture in the middle underneath it, the Victory of Samothrace light fixture. Then we have the other light fixtures, which are made out of uh, pieces of PVC, which seem to work pretty well. Um, this up, people sit out here, we have parties, and it's nice in the summer, all, all 10 days of it. Yeah.